Hey YouTube, this is Sensation on Fortnite for another review. Today we've got something really special uh, on the bracket to review, and that would be the exclusive All Brass Sunset Models 2021 release of the Southern Pacific AC9 2884 Yellowstone type steam locomotive with the oil tender not coal but oil uh this locomotive comes factory painted factory with dcc and sound already installed and factory led lighting uh, i've already run this locomotive once just to make sure that it would accept my curves for what they are and it runs fine around the layout um so this isn't like the first running of it i had to make sure it would run fine before i did a review of it to make sure <laughs> and when I put her on the layout pulling a train, that it would actually run for you guys. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and take the protective sleeve off of this locomotive. Off of the box, anyway. Well, to do that, if you pull it there, and there's the yellow box. Now, obviously, if you get yours, if you were one of the lucky 80 people... Um, or however many people bought one, uh, to reserve this locomotive, or to act, or to eventually own one, um, you're going to want to keep that sleeve. It's not important, but if you want your box to stay pristine, I would recommend keeping that sleeve. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> Well, I guess I'll start off with the MSRP. Uh, this locomotive is $2,500 MSRP straight from Sunset. Just putting that out there. With about 25 bucks for shipping and they ship it and they ship everything UPS. So it's great. Um, anyway, as you guys can tell, here on the end, it's just pretty much a piece of paper with a sticker. It's really nothing a whole. It's really nothing special about the end of the box, except for the fact that it says Sunset Models. Uh, I was kind of hoping for, you know, for, for how much money you spent on this, for how much money I spent on this engine. Uh, I was kind of hoping that there'd be a little more something extra on the end of the box, but uh, there's not. So I mean, that's okay. I mean, it's. I don't know. I would have liked to see a picture of the locomotive on the on the box here, but I mean that's okay, I guess. As you can tell, they have six different numbers. Uh, the one colored in red is the one I have. I have 3800. Uh, then you have 3802, which is coal. 38 or 3803, another coal. 3806, oil. 3807, which is SP lines, coal, and then 3811. Uh, I'm not sure how many AC9s there were actually built for the Southern Pacific Railway. Um, but I do know that there are six different numbers offered from Sunset, and there are 80 models. So, I would assume 40 in each uh, oil and coal is what I would assume. So, as I said, this model is $2,500 comes with the factory DCC and Tsunami 2 sound, LED lighting, and is factory painted. Well, I'm sure you guys are curious to see what's inside the box. So let's go ahead and open the box. You're going to be very careful when you're opening the box, obviously, because, you know, it's a really expensive brass locomotive that's inside. And make sure that you're putting your bo top box top away. Just to, you know, kind of keep it. Uh, when you first get your locomotive out of the box, from the shipping box anyway, this will be laying on top of the box. It won't be in here. It'll be laying on top. Uh, and pretty much it says, Congratulations on your purchase of the finest example of brass artwork in model railroading today. The highly detailed and accurate scale model of the Southern Pacific AC9. So they kind of do a brief history of the AC9 here. Uh, they have an unpacking um, for operation and maintenance. Um, 
here they have the invoice. Now, obviously, if you did a reserve price on this, uh, it was $2,000, not $2,500. So, the reserve price is obviously the better price that you want to have. So, and then, then they tell you how to fire it up in DC or fire it up with DCC. Here are some CV functions that you can change if you want to. There's obviously a function chart over here with everything that you need to know about the engine. Um, lubrication, electrical, which is a DC motor, Maxon 12 volt cordless, sound equipped, and customer service that you can reach at, uh, at sunset. Um, or call, or, you know, make sure it's got a warranty on it, although this has a three-month warranty, original owner warranty for parts, labor, and shipping uh, costs, and a one-year warranty for parts. So, if you're the original owner, you're breaking off pretty good if your locomotive has any problem whatsoever. So... That is that. Then take the foam out. There's lots of foam in here. Well, it's black foam, not white foam. Anyway, you have your silica gel, which, because this is an expensive engine, I'm going to keep that in there. But underneath it, which I just discovered, Come on. Come on. There we go. We've got uh, extra parts, extra detail parts, um, and a door that you can put on the back of the locomotive if you so please. I won't because, well, I don't need to. I don't see it. I don't have a need to do that yet, so... I just leave this right where I found it, and then I put the silica gel right back over top. Okay, so, this is what it looks like straight from the box, okay? Adjust my camera here a little bit. Alright, this is what you're getting right here paper tissue paper you want to keep all of this this is very important for return if you ever have a problem returning your model this helps keep this helps protect the paint from anything and from anything from any and everything so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tender out first okay now when you get your engine and it's it will look a lot better than this this is you know just me putting it back in the box so I can, you know, store it for later. So I can do this unpacking video. I want to carefully unwrap the tissue paper here. What I usually do is I usually fold it back up and shove it back in the hole where the tender went. And then here's the tender. It has these foam pieces on it. I'm going to take those off, put them back in the box, and there you go. There is your tender. Now then, we'll take a look at the tender now. So where to start? I'm going to start in the front here. Okay. There we go. So we have the DCC plug for the sound and speaker, for the sound and DCC. We have a pin for the drawbar right there. We have a lot, we have a whole lot of truck detail, which I like, including truck chains, which is always nice to see. And they do function. Now on yours, there also will be foam inserts here. Um, I already took the liberty in taking them out because they were a pain to kind of get out of there, so 
that will be shoved up there to keep the uh, tender trucks from turning uh, while in transit. Uh, the other cool thing on this is all these little doors, these flaps here open up. And then just show you a great. At first, I didn't think there was anything in there, but then closer inspection showed that there's actually a board, and you can actually see kind of you can kind of see down into it. Um, but they do open and close. Although normal operation, you're going to want them closed anyway. So that's a cool feature. Now we've got the uh, LED light in the back. All the fine hand details on everything. We have a KD number five, it looks like, on the back of the tender. Very, very exquisite. Also, dual speaker. Um, I think up here underneath the uh, urn part, uh, right there in the middle of the frame, uh, I believe that's a toolbox, I think, I would assume. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody who's an SP guy can tell me that. Uh, that's obviously your brake, uh, your brake, your, uh, yeah, your brakes, I think. Yeah. And uh, the trucks are also sprung. You can see a little bit of wheel wear on them already. Um, that's just from me testing it and making sure it runs around the layout. Speaking of that, uh, this thing also needs roughly a 35-inch radius to uh, make it around. I have, I think, a 38, so it's pushing it, but it's just enough to where it's to where it uh, goes around just fine. I'm gonna set the tender down on the track over here, and now. The main part, which I know y'all are going to be waiting, which I know everybody's waiting for, especially when I put this video out. The moment of truth. Drum roll. Look, it's tissue paper. What I've always wanted. <laughs> Yay! I'm dumb. Oh, he knows that. Oh, cool. Oh, gosh dang. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm getting amazed by the engine here. Okay, obviously, again, what you want to do with the uh, with your packing material is I always fold it up over itself once just to keep it in the box. Here's your model. Again, this model will have foam inserts here at the pilot wheel, uh, which you'll need to take out before running. It will also have a foam strip here to keep, you know, to keep that from hitting the frame. Um, this is not articulated. So the reason why this thing needs a 35 inch radius, this does not articulate like everything else does. But this part, I just have your big foam block here, which you just carefully remove. And now, she's free to move. Just look at all of the detail on there. So the pilot, the plow, um, hangs a little low. Um, but that's nothing that can't be fixed with a little bit of pressure with your fingers uh, to kind of bend it up a little bit. Um, and frankly, I just think that's just from how it was shipped, honestly. So I just, you know, provide a little bit of pressure. And it usually, I mean, not going to notice it much, but I mean, it's usually going to sit up a little bit higher, so that's what I usually like to do. 
Um, right. Ah, okay. Let's see, moving down here, we've got a whole lot of detail here just on every inch of this engine. It's just eye candy all over. And unlike the PSC, they have the brake shoes on every axle. Well, I was except for the trailing truck and pilot. You can also stand a C in there. Uh, there's the rubber drive train right there. Just look at all that detail. And it's glory. Okay, so there are some very cool features about this locomotive. Uh, let's see here if I can find one of them. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, at the actual running side of this beast. So we do have cab figures inside. Look at all the detail. There's so much detail. They've got every single rivet or bolt uh, on the uh, cylinder face. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, now the marker lights do light up and the number boards light up and obviously the headlight lights up. It's also got a cab light in it, which is really cool. The other cool thing that I love about this thing is the cab opens up and then and you have when you have stuff that opens up like that that's just cool man I mean come on so I was told by somebody on Facebook that uh I showed them a picture of this thing, and uh, they said I was they said I was stupid for spending the amount of money I did on this engine. I failed to see it. Also, this is the here. here so here's the back of the uh, you know here's where the door would go right here. Um, this would also be where all the chains would go, right in there, right in those eyelets there, um, so that you can have a chain between. The locomotive and tender as well as the draw as well as the uh plate deck or the deck plate there's the plug for the dcc plug there is a just a lot so much detail on this locomotive it's just insane there's also a, a nice metal draw bar which is really cool let's take a look at some of the underbody detail Obviously, we've got our gears here. Um, no traction tires on this engine, um, but those can be acquired from Sunset if you so desire. Uh, because this engine weighs probably about, I don't know, probably th almost four pounds by itself, I would think it has enough pulling power to pull 16 uh, SP coaches. So that's the train we're going to pull. But then just look at all this. Just. There is so much detail going on here. I just, wow. Mm. They even got rubber hoses here to sit to, you know, for the articulation. Check that out. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, come on. I didn't even see this side of the engine when I took it out of the box the first time. Wow. So this thing's hand built and is, uh, amazing it is absolutely amazing and i am so glad i bought one so glad i bought one this thing is just fantastic so anyway let me get the tender and locomotive hooked up uh it's a bit of a process to get that hooked up um so it might take me a little bit so all right, I got the tender and the locomotive all hooked up now, and now she's sitting all pretty on the track. Now I can really kind of take a look and see what's what on this locomotive. Uh, 
this thing just looks fantastic. From this thing, this looks fantastic from every angle. I have yet to find something I don't like on it. Well, actually, only thing I really don't like um, is the tender plug. Um, it's kind of a hassle to put it in, um, but I mean, once it's in, it's you know pretty much there. So. But yeah, I, I mean, does it have the same sounds as my, let's say, SPGS4? Yes. Is that a bad thing? No. Not at all, honestly. Not at all. But yeah, I mean, so let's go ahead and get this thing on. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this locomotive on, and uh, then we can uh, get going with a run by. So obviously F0 did the uh, headlight uh, and the dynamo and the dynamo. F1 is your bell. F2 is the whistle. F3 does the uh, air horn, but well, it, it selects the air horn for F2. So when you press F2 again. Now you have an air horn. And then you deselect F3. Back to your whistle. F4 is your cylinder cocks. Uh, F5 and F6 is the uh, cutoff drift enable. F6 is your cutoff drift disable. F7 is your dimmer. F9, obviously F8 is your mute. F9, mm. let's see what it sounds like with uh, F3 pushed here. So, you have two different grade crossing signals, uh, obviously you have to press F3 to ha activate the air horn, and then you press F9 for the grade crossing. Uh, F10. Is your blowdown. F11 is your uh, independent train brake. Uh, F12. Is your brake select train line charge? Uh, F13 is your couple and uncouple. F14 it activates your switching mode. F16 is wheel chains. F16 is your water stop. Let's see what that sounds like. Could be a little louder. Uh, F17 is your fuel loading.
F18 does your ash dump. Although this is a oil burning locomotive, so there really wouldn't be any ashes to dump. Uh, F19. Is wheel slip. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's what that does. Cool. So it just does, it just plays a sound to, for the wheel slip. It doesn't actually activate any wheel slipping. Uh, your stop, obviously, uh, your emergency stop button on your uh, controller obviously activates the train brake, which stops it immediately. Or it activates emergency so it uh, releases the, so it releases air. Uh, F20 is your injector. F21 is your sander valve. Though I'm not entirely sure if that was anything. F22. F22 is uh, your uh, cab chatter, um, not not the Raptor version. Uh, F23 is your all aboard. F24 is an FX3 function output, and FX4 is or uh, function 25 is the FX4 function output. Uh, I want to see what 24 does. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty much all the sounds that you go through. Um, at least for this one. We didn't hear it F23 though. There you go. That's the entire function chart list. Um, obviously, there are different ones. You have, uh, I believe, with the CVs, you have your this, that, and the other. This will come as function as a uh, locomotive number three when you first start it. Please change it to the cab number. Uh, you have different bells. It looks like you have about 54 different bells. You have a master volume, whistle volume, and bell volume. So that's always cool. Alright, let's go ahead and get the uh, train behind it and uh, get a run around the layout. Alright, we got the train all hooked up. Now, let's make sure everyone's loaded.
I was about to say. I'm definitely impressed. The engine just, you know, performed exactly how it should have. Um, my track work isn't the best. So, and clean track is always a problem, as we all know. But the fact that this thing ran, only one little hiccup um, on, this, on the entire run, going around at least three or four different times. Uh, <laughs> 10 out of 10, Sunset. 10 out of 10. This one, y'all nailed it. Y'all nailed this one out of the park. I am blown away completely. I mean, I've got a brass big boy. I've got a brass Northern Pacific Z5. I've got a brass 1522 and a brass CNO T1. None of those. And I also got a brass GS4. The GS4 runs fine on this layout, except I can't really pull this entire coach, coach set and probably to oil the wheels. But this thing, you know, had few slips here and there on the back corner but and again everything does so honest to god my honest opinion of this thing this thing's worth every every penny money can buy every penny they say you can't buy happiness that's a lie this is happiness mm -hmm. This is the best brass articulated steamer I own. And I have three artic brass articulated. I've got a key. I've got a PFM crown. And now I have a sunset. And this one blows them out of the water. So... If you missed out on this, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> the AC9s, in terms of HO modeling, you have a Kane, you have Max Gray, you have the early Sunset, uh, and then you have the new Sunset, and then I think you also have PSC, I think, Precision Scale Company, I think. Yeah, anyway. Um, and I haven't seen the PSC one, so I don't know. Um, but I've seen the Akane, I've seen the Max Gray, and the 2021 release is the best out of all of them. Now... Uh, there's a couple, one thing I do want to point out. To my natural eye, that is not flickering. Um, that is just the camera lens. Um, the lights have a purple hue to them. Uh, so they're not warm white like I originally had thought they were. Um, just because of the angle that I was at and everything. Because I don't get down on the camera. I just kind of take a picture and... Be like, yeah, I want that there. Um, so I don't always get the best shot, so to speak. But, yeah, they are, um, they're not warm white like they should be, but you want to know what? I don't care. It's six cent LEDs or whatever they are. They don't cost any. They twenty two thousand dollars for this engine. Twenty five hundred dollars for this engine. But it's hand built, handcraft for this hand, yeah hand built model. <laughs> That's great. So I know I don't review brass often. Uh, I mainly have die cast and plastic, but um, 
the brass bug has bit me hard. Uh, and you heard me rattle off a couple. Um, yeah. So, how would I rate this compared to, let's say, the Intermountain AC-12? This is better. The AC-9 is better than the plastic AC-12. First of all, this thing weighs about four pounds. The AC-12 weighs probably about a pound and a half, two pounds maybe. So it's a half a pound lighter. And yes, I know, brass construction. But still, come on Intermountain. I know y'all got a new run coming out. And I expect that AC-12, that, you know, that new run, to weigh as much as this thing. So, anyway, before I go way too off topic, my final thoughts on this locomotive, and the, my, my final thoughts, yes, there are some things that I mean, obviously, it's, you know, the tiny details are the details that are going to break first. However, it's not, it's not a hard fix. Um, so, I mean, do I, could I send this back to Sunset and get all the detail parts repaired? Sure. Will I? No. I mean, there's like, maybe like one or two things that are, you know, flimsy on it right now. Um, and that's just from transportation. And that's just from transporting it, honestly. And, you know, doing, and, you know, actually running this engine. Um, that's what I bought it for. I bought it to run. I didn't buy it to sit on a shelf. Uh, will I add the chains on? Maybe. I don't know yet. Considering I still want to be able to take this locomotive to other layouts and run it, I might end up leaving the chains off because it's easier to transport that way. I don't have to then worry about taking the chains off and doing all this, that, and the other just to get the engine and tender unlocked. I'd rather just leave it off and then be able to transport the locomotive wherever I go. I I thank you for giving me the for giving you know for sending the extra detail parts like the door. Will I ever put that door? Will I ever put that door on? No. That door's never gonna come on. That door is not gonna get put on ever. The best features of this locomotive, though. Come on. Really? I mean, come on. Oh, hang on. How can you say no to opening pieces on a HO model? I mean, what plastic engine does this? Before you all say put MTH, MTH is die cast. I mean, like, seriously. But yeah, the uh, the cab is also not flickering like it is on camera. So there are some glue spots where obviously there was uh, you know some errors. Um, the more you kind of look at the engine, the more you kind of see some of the errors and some things, um, or like the just the problem that people had, I guess, putting it putting it together. And you want to know what? When you stand back and look at this thing, you're never going to tell. Ever. You will never be able to tell anything's wrong with this engine. So again, Sunset, this model is 10 out of 10. Y'all knock this one out of the park. This has been the model that I've been after for a long time. And...
I didn't want to get in a cane. I didn't want to get a Max Gray. I wanted one from factory. In fact, I wanted one from that was factory painted, LEDs, and DCC and sound, and Sunset came through and delivered. In fact, y'all even over delivered. Um, now, uh, this engine does not come with a smoke unit. Hang on. No, does not come with a smoke unit. It's just hollow in there. Um, however, I'm sure if, I'm sure if someone will do it, where they'll put a smoke unit in this thing. Uh, so, yeah. My final, the final part. Let's see. What's the last thing I want to say about this locomotive? It's not so much about what the price is. It's, it's more of what you hold dear to yourself. I didn't care what the price was. I wanted an AC9. And I wanted the best of the best. So that's what I bought. And I am proud to be one of the 80 that has one of these of the 2020 run release. I also want to give a huge thanks to Scott Mann, the uh, owner of Sunset Models, or I think it's the owner, not entirely sure. Anyway, Scott Mann, if you ever see this video, I thank you a whole lot uh, for working with me and giving me the opportunity to pay partial to get to do partial to payments on this locomotive. I thank you dearly. Uh, that is how I was able to afford this locomotive because I just can't draw. I just I can't afford to drop two grand on a piece like this. At, at one time so i thank you uh scott man you are awesome and i've just i <laughs> I, I can't say i can't say enough good things about this engine it's just oh man this, this engine is <laughs> oh. this has been a long time coming and it finally happened, and I'm not disappointed. I'm so happy with this engine. I'm so happy with it. I absolutely love it. So, there you go. And if you guys also noticed, uh, I forgot to mention it, but uh, the entire boiler in the cab is painted. And it has an interior. It's completely painted. I love that. I love that. I think it's great. But, with all great things, it is time to come to an end to this review, because I'm sure it's gone on long enough, and I'm sure I'm tired of hearing my voice while I'm editing this later. So, with that, this is Sensation. Signing off. See you later!